In this video, let's see another category and another type of always continuous functions which is known as identity function. We already know and we have memorized that yes, constant function is always everywhere continuous. Since one category we already studied, the second type is identity function. Wherever in your question you find that you see an identity function, straight away say that it is continuous. You don't need to verify or prove or calculate and tell why is it so. Now identity function is like what? It is like your y is equal to x. Now you know that y is equal to x, if you want to plot the graph of y is equal to x, this is x axis, this is y axis. Now y is equal to x means what? That if x is 1, y is 1. Suppose I tell you the very basics of this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here or till 4 or 5 maybe. Now when x is 1, y is 1, so 1 point is 1, 1. When x is 2, y is also 2 because they are equal. When x is 3, y is 3. When x is 4, y is 4 and so on. So basically y is equal to x will always be a straight line. If you draw it with the help of ruler or scale, it will be actually very straight. That means what? That means you can always draw this graph without any lifting of pen or pencil. Did I lift a pen or pencil? No, I just drew it like this. That means no pen or pencil to be lifted. That means it is always everywhere continuous. Similarly, not only in the first quadrant, but if I say my x is minus 1, even my y is minus 1, so it will be something like here. If I go downwards too, so it is minus 1, minus 1, so the first point is this. Similarly, minus 2, minus 2, minus 3, minus 3, and even this can be extended like this. So that means what? That means this graph actually directly tells me that it is for a continuous function. You do not need to calculate it with the help of limits also. But still for few people who wish to verify with the help of limits, I just tell you that okay, let me take y is equal to x or fx is equal to x. Where x can assume any real value. It can be 2, it can be 3, it can be minus 3, anything. Right? So fx is equal to x is taken and x belongs to real. Now for verification purpose what I do is I take the limit x tends to a fx where I have taken a as what? a as any arbitrary real as we did in the previous proof. Right? Any arbitrary real number because if we have a whole domain of real numbers we can pick up any real number. Right? So we picked a. Now when you picked a you know that limit x tends to a what is the value of fx? fx is nothing but x. You just substitute x here. Now, when I substituted x and I know that x tends to a, directly I can substitute it with the help of something called as this and my answer would be what? It will be nothing but an a that I get because I put x tends to a here. Similarly, what is the value when f of x of f of x is x? What would be the value of f of a? f of a means say my y is minus 1. So what is f of minus 1? Since both these are equal, y is equal to x, f of minus 1 will also be minus 1. Similarly, f of a will also be a. So when f of a is also a, that means the value of the function is also a, the value of the limit is also a, that means what? That means LHL is equal to RHL is equal to value of the function at that point. And it will always be a finite value because we are talking about real numbers. So that is why I can prove from here also that my identity function is continuous everywhere. And I can prove from graph also that my identity function is continuous everywhere. You do not need to prove it. You just need to memorize it.